Thank you, Teresa. Well, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody that's uh, here in our midst this morning and those that are also watching online, those of us that are sitting here that have heard this story perhaps before or perhaps for the first time, you may have already figured out that there is no pretty little bow that wraps up this week's lesson. Jacob, now named Israel, sends his favorite son by his favorite wife to check up on the other boys, and Joseph winds up sold into slavery. To cover up their treachery, the brothers concoct this story about Joseph being torn up to pieces by a wild animal. In the days before DNA testing, they convincingly use goat blood smeared on Joseph's coat to prove his death to their father. What made their brothers so jealous that they originally plotted to kill Joseph? He's kind of like the Justin Bieber of his day. You know, it, just irritating. And I think Donny Osmond in the uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Joseph the Dreamer gets the favorite son treatment from dad. While the rest of the boys are working for a living, Joseph hangs around the house, kind of like his dad did at that age. Keeps the old man entertained. I mean, who wouldn't get a little bit jealous? Now, every person in this room, and you folks watching online, have dealt with jealousy on some level. I mean, hopefully not to the point of contemplating murder, but who hasn't felt the urge to want to get ahead of a rival? The running joke in our house has always been that Evan, who's the youngest, what he wants, he gets. I mean, it's not true, of course, but Alex and I have always teased that Ann puts him ahead of the two of us. Now, fess up, you've got a similar situation in your own house. I know it exists. <laughs> the father, Israel, has sent 17-year-old Joseph to check up on his big brothers, and they don't like him for his favorite son status. Now, this is their chance to shut Joseph up once and for all, and in their twisted logic, to get from their father the attention that they thought was due them. That's the problem with groupthink. None of us is as stupid as all of us. <laughs> we saw it in Charlottesville this week. Reuben the eldest, knowing that his father would hold him responsible for whatever has happened, prevails upon the gang to not kill Joseph. So they toss him into the dry cistern to await his fate. The next scene is where the new revised standard version of the Bible is more accurate than the message interpretation that we heard this, this morning. The more accurate translations from the Hebrew say, when some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him up out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. The Midianites were basically local scavengers. They look in the cistern, likely knowing that it was dry, not for water, but to see what saleable junk had been thrown in there. They were dumpster diving. And what do they find but Joseph in his underwear? 
Joseph was of no use to them, except for selling. And they hawk him to the Ishmaelite caravan for 20 pieces of silver, which was the going rate for a male of his age. A piece of silver is commonly referred to in the Bible is a shekel, about a half ounce by weight. The price of silver this past week, $16.34. Joseph was thrown away for less than the cost of a family cell phone plan. Eventually, the brothers return home with the flock and must explain Joseph's absence. And they had several days to hash out their story. How ironic that their father, who had used the disguise of clothes to fool his father, is now fooled by his favorite son's clothes. Joseph's coat, smeared in blood, is presented as evidence that he has met a gruesome end. Of course, Israel is inconsolable. I mean, how could this happen? Hadn't this man, formerly known as Jacob the Taker, struggled mightily to change his ways? Where is God's promise? How high is the cost of jealousy? What is the price of throwing someone away? Undoubtedly, there are times that we identify with Joseph. We feel betrayed and battered and bruised by the people that we thought were looking out for us, whether it is our family and friends or total strangers or the business we work for. There are definitely those times when we feel like Israel crying out, Why, God? We don't want to see ourselves as the brothers who throw away their sibling. I mean, when have we ever turned our back on the family? We can't possibly see ourselves as the capitalists who think of another person as just something to be traded away for the sake of profit. I mean, what kind of person would really think of another person as discardable? Obviously, the person who celebrates Nazis. The people who want to whitewash our history of slavery and the true lingering effects of the Confederacy. The person who throws their child or sibling or friend away simply because they've come out as gay or transgendered or somehow other. In the coming weeks, you will hear testimony from members of our church who represented us at the Youngstown Pride Day Festival. And they heard firsthand the painful stories from people who have been thrown away by their families and, yes, their churches. Real life experiences that illustrate the importance of how a church, our church, can be a place of hope and healing as an open and affirming community of believers in the life and lessons of Jesus. Our personal jealousies get in the way of living lives that are a blessing to others. The group think jealousies lead to bickering over trivial matters instead of working together to focus on the big picture things that really have a positive impact on people's lives. And we see how worldwide this is by listening to that prayer 
translated from the Korean language that we shared this morning. There is not a price tag on your seat today, but it does not come at no cost to you. And this goes for you folks watching online. The price of admission this morning is us asking God for forgiveness for ignoring our brothers and sisters dumped in that pit. The price of being here is putting others before our desire to accumulate more stuff. The price of admission is saying, yes, I will crawl down in that pit and do whatever I can to lift a trapped person out. The cost to us is saying, yeah, you know what, I'll help do the things around here to create a place of welcome for all. Sure, I'll help lead our youth. I'll help run that media booth. I'll be here early enough on Sunday morning to help provide hospitality to the visitors that come. Yeah, I'll help, I'll help stock that food pantry. I'll support the scouting programs. I'll help pay for and maintain this building so that people struggling with alcohol and drug addictions have a safe place to meet. And I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to invite my family and friends to share in that opportunity that is found here to make a positive difference in our community. Joseph's brothers got nothing for their actions except regret. What will you do to live your life without regret? Amen.